Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. What secrets lie hidden in Emperor Qianlong's concubine Chun's tomb that shocked everyone? The pure consort of Emperor Qianlong. Chunhui Imperial Noble Consort, known as Consort Chun, was one of his most beloved concubines. Born into an ordinary Han Chinese family with the surname Su, she won Emperor Qianlong's favor with her exceptional beauty and intelligence. After Qianlong ascended the throne, Su was promoted to the rank of pure concubine. Following the birth of a prince, she was granted the title of consort Chun and eventually elevated to imperial noble consort, a position of great honor. Consort Chun bore Qianlong three sons during her lifetime and enjoyed immense favor. She was not only showered with glory during her life but was also commemorated posthumously when Emperor Qianlong ordered the construction of a memorial tower and a dedicated steel for her. Such gestures were extremely rare in the Qing dynasty's court rituals and highlighted the extraordinary favor she enjoyed. A shocking discovery in the tomb. Centuries later, archaeologists opened Consort Chun's tomb and uncovered a startling scene, there were two coffins inside. This unexpected discovery raised a significant question, who was buried in the second coffin? At first, experts speculated that it might belong to one of Consort Chun's trusted maidservants. In the Qing dynasty, some maidservants who were deeply trusted by their masters were occasionally permitted to be buried alongside them. However, this practice was highly irregular in royal tombs. As maidservants were not members of the royal family and were not entitled to such honors. The answer revealed. Through the study of unearthed artifacts, experts found the answer engraved on a tombstone. The inscription clearly identified the occupant as Lady Olinara. None other than Emperor Qianlong's second empress, Empress Olinara. The story of Empress Olinara is one of complex emotions. After her relationship with Qianlong deteriorated, she was not given an honorable burial upon her death. Surprisingly, Emperor Qianlong ordered her coffin to be unceremoniously placed in Consort Chun's tomb. This arrangement not only appeared highly disrespectful but also violated royal burial traditions. A Complex History Historians explain that Lady Olinara was one of the women chosen for Qianlong by Emperor Yongzheng. This marriage was primarily arranged for two reasons. Lady Olinara came from a prestigious family, possessing grace and virtue that met the standards for royal brides. Emperor Yongzheng hoped the marriage would prompt Qianlong to settle down and ensure the royal lineage. However, Qianlong, not yet emperor at the time, was deeply in love with Lady Fucha, who would later become Empress Fucha. Lady Olinara received little attention from Qianlong due to his strong feelings for Lady Fucha. Nevertheless, Lady Olinara, being gentle and reserved, did not dwell on Qianlong's indifference and quietly accepted her role as a secondary consort. A fall from grace. Unfortunately for Lady Olinara, her status as a secondary consort was soon overshadowed. The following year, Qianlong elevated another woman, Lady Gao, to a position equal to Lady Olinara's. Lady Gao lacked the noble lineage and qualities of Lady Olinara, making this promotion a clear signal of Qianlong's disinterest in her. This arrangement made Lady Olinara's position within the court awkward and publicly highlighted her lack of favor. When Qianlong ascended the throne, her situation became even more evident. Although she was given the title of consort, it was a relatively modest rank. Meanwhile, Lady Gao was named noble consort, outranking Lady Olinara. The Emperor's Cold Favor Qianlong's apparent affection for Lady Gao became particularly evident when she fell gravely ill. He was deeply anxious about her condition, prayed for her recovery, and even broke protocol to promote her to imperial a noble consort as a mark of his devotion. During this ceremony, Lady Olinara was, incidentally, promoted to noble consort, merely as part of the ritual. These details reveal that Qianlong's treatment of Lady Olinara was more of a symbolic gesture to honor Emperor Yongzheng's wishes. While he granted her nominal respect and status, he never truly invested emotionally in her. A Lifetime of Indifference 
Historical records show that Qianlong's cold attitude toward Lady Olinara persisted throughout her life. She was unable to bear children for him for many years, which left her in an awkward position in the imperial harem. In contrast, nearly all the other women who entered the palace around the same time as her bore Qianlong children, underscoring the emperor's indifference toward her. This tragic dynamic between Qianlong, Consort Chun, and Empress Olinara continues to fascinate historians and offers a glimpse into the complex emotions and rituals of the Qing dynasty's imperial court. Despite this, Lady Olinara was gentle by nature, refraining from ambition or conflict. It was precisely this disposition that allowed her to avoid many struggles in the imperial harem. Despite her relatively low status, enabling her to safeguard herself in the complex palace environment. Later, after Emperor Qianlong's two most beloved women, Empress Fu Cha and noble consort Gao, passed away. The position of the mistress of the six palaces became vacant. With the Empress Dowager's support, Lady Ula Nara ascended to the role of Empress, leveraging her lineage and seniority. However, this appointment did not gain Qianlong's approval. Qianlong even composed a poem openly expressing his dissatisfaction with Lady Ulanara, using the verses to vent his frustrations. This alone demonstrates that her rise to the position of empress was entirely due to external forces, not Qianlong's genuine desire. Under the empress dowager's influence, Qianlong reluctantly attempted to coexist with Lady Ulanara, and the two managed a relatively peaceful relationship for four years. During this time, Lady Ula Nara bore Qianlong three children, two sons and one daughter. Yet even so, Qianlong showed no particular favoritism toward these children. Not only did he fail to designate them as heirs, but he also refrained from granting them any noble titles. This indifference further reflected Lady Ula Nara and her children's low standing in Qianlong's heart. As time went on, Qianlong's affections shifted to noble consort Ling, who bore him six children. Lady Ula Nara was keenly aware of this change. She understood that Qianlong was a capricious man and thus did not feel sorrow over his shifting affections. Her only hope was that Qianlong would provide her children with the status and treatment they deserved. However, Qianlong never met her expectations, remaining indifferent toward both her and her children. In Qianlong's later years, during a southern tour, he brought Lady Ula Nara, noble consort Ling, and several other consorts along. While passing through Jinan, Qianlong indulged in melancholy, reminiscing about his deceased Empress Fu Cha. Lady Ula Nara felt he was being hypocritical but suppressed her emotions and did not express her thoughts. However, upon reaching Hangzhou, Qianlong became consumed by indulgence. Reveling nightly and openly consorting with women of questionable background. This infuriated Lady Ula Nara, who finally admonished the emperor in public. Given Qianlong's already low regard for her, being publicly reproached by her only worsened the situation. Humiliated, he erupted in anger, reprimanding her harshly without reservation. Lady Ula Nara, deeply outraged, protested by cutting off her hair in public. In Manchu tradition, a woman cutting her hair symbolized mourning for a major family loss. Making this act tantamount to cursing Emperor Qianlong and the Empress Dowager. This was deemed a grave act of defiance, thoroughly enraging Qianlong. He immediately sent her back to the capital, stripped her of the Empress's seals, and declared her deposed without formal abolition. Although nominally still Empress, she was effectively cast aside. A year later, Lady Ula Nara passed away in desolation. When Qianlong received the news, he was hunting and displayed no emotion. He didn't attend her funeral, leaving all arrangements to subordinates, who handled it perfunctorily. Her funeral was extremely modest, costing only 207 taels of silver, less than what was typically spent on lower-ranking officials. She was given a neither a posthumous title nor a spirit tablet, and her descendants were forbidden from offering sacrifices. Even her burial site was unprepared, 
and she was ultimately interred hastily in the tomb of imperial noble consort Chunhui. Tragically, Qianlong also ordered the destruction of all archives and portraits related to her. Modern researchers scouring the eastern Qing tombs have failed to find any images of her. Even in group portraits of Qing consorts, her face has been erased. As if this former empress had never existed. After Lady Ula Nara's fall from favor, her family also suffered. Their hereditary rank was downgraded, and her eldest son, the twelfth prince, received no title or position, living a cautious life until his death, never being trusted or valued. The mystery of Lady Ula Nara's burial site persisted for years until archaeologists uncovered the tomb of imperial noble consort Chunhui. They discovered that Lady Ula Nara had been buried there haphazardly. Her status as empress inferior even to that of an ordinary consort. This was extraordinarily rare in feudal history and exposed Emperor Qianlong's coldness and ruthlessness toward her. Some historians have pointed out that according to Qing court rituals, the funeral of an empress typically required months or even years to complete, with actual expenditures far exceeding any single account. Yet, from existing records, Lady Ula Nara's funeral was indeed unimaginably simple. Lady Ula Nara entered the palace at the age of 14 and died at 49, spending over 30 years with Qianlong and bearing him children. But she never earned genuine respect. Her tragic fate not only reflects Emperor Qianlong's heartlessness but also serves as a microcosm of the plight of women in the imperial harem. History eventually unearthed her erased identity, but her brief and humiliating life remains a poignant tale. This is the History and Culture Channel. Liking and subscribing are the greatest help and support to us. Thank you everyone and see you in the next time.